What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Jim Leader Geo, and this is GBA Season 7, Week 7, as the San Francisco Giantes take on the Alola Athletic and their coach, Hoodlum Scrafty, aka Callum. Uh, we are ready to start, and ooh, this guy, alright, Callum, good battler. He's a, he's a good battler, he has a reputation of being a good battler. Uh, I'm excited for this. If you're curious about the team that I brought and what I thought he would bring, you can check out the locker room. And let's see what he did bring. Oh, Tumon, I was really, really hoping he wouldn't. I mean, there's... I had quite a lot for Embor, and I was hoping he wouldn't bring it, but he did. You know what it, you know what it seems like he did? He realized that I might prep highly for the Excadrill. And I did. Um, and so... This is, uh, unfortunately, it means he's going to bring the Embor. Now, Salamence can kind of switch in, but it can't take a Rock-type move that well, so that does hurt my uh, my plans a little bit here. But I'm just going to take note of who he has. And then Espeon. Espeon, another one that I do kind of have some things for it, but... There is some... There is some want here. So, things that he brought that I knew he was going to bring, the Shaman, the Tyranitar, and the Rotom, um, I was... I was very... I thought it was very likely he'd bring the Crobat also, but a few things that I wasn't prepared for. Uh, we're going to lead with Klisk X here, because he does not have a ground type. The good news is that in addition to not having a ground type. He doesn't have a steel or a fairy type, and so Mad Mence, even though it's a defensive spec, can click Draco Meteor any turn that it wants to. Uh, now, I was pretty close, uh, as I mentioned in the team builder, to bringing a Spex Salamence or a Dragonium Z Special Salamence, and all of those things would have been great, uh, but I did not do any of those things. So, no Snorlax, uh, which is kind of good. No Sableye. I hate Sableye, so that's good. No Exadrill. Uh, no Drudagon. And no Aromatisse. Two, four, six. He's going to lead with the Bat. And I am going to lead with Heliolisk. Now, there's... He leads with the bat a lot in previous matches, and he almost always just clicks U-turn. Uh, which is what I assume he'll do here. However, I just want to make sure that Brave Bat doesn't just annihilate me. I mean, <laughs> Brave Bat actually does do quite a lot of damage, but I don't think he wants to risk it. I'm going to click Volt Switch. Uh, Brave Bat doesn't kill me with anything, but it will pretty much decimate me. But I, I anticipate he's just going to click the U-turn, scout to see whether or not I'm scarfed. Because if he switches, he doesn't gain any of that information. No, he's not going to do that. I don't think he's going to risk that I'm scarfed. It's very, very common to lead scarfed mons, especially in a situation like this where I'd feel somewhat confident that I'm going to outspeed everything. And I've seen him lead scarfed Rotom, thinking he can pick up the quick uh, Volt Switch, so... I anticipate he's going to think that I'm Scarfed. And if I'm wrong, and he clicks uh, Brave Bird or Cross Poison, if he's Jolly Banded, it won't kill me. If he's Adamant Banded, it has a chance to. So we'll see what he's got for me here. He does click U-Turn. Okay, so he, he establishes that I am not... Uh, scarfed and uh, we can what can we expect to see here maybe the shaman maybe the T-tar. but this is gonna give us a really good opportunity to learn what he's got and then I'm gonna look at that damage that he did with that u-turn because it was quite high shaman would take the least amount of damage from a volt switch of any of the members of his team Barring uh, very defensive sets on the Rotom or T-Tar. But this is a big, uh, this is a big knowledge gaining turn for me. 
or it will be <laughs> it will be a big knowledge gaining turn uh and he could go t-tar here and this will give us an opportunity to see whether or not it's offensive or not. One thing I am a little concerned about is whether or not it's a Dragon Dance T-Tar. The fact that it doesn't have um, the Excadrill alongside it suggests that he's not he's not overly concerned with it being a support mon this week. Um, if it is the T-Tar, Endless Sky, that's who is that? All right, that is the Shaman. And uh, it does 20% maybe. So I'm just going to calc that. 22 to 26% is what I would do to not really any defensive investment. If it maybe has some. If it has max HP, it does 18 to 22 Switching in to Salamence before I know anything about this set, such as whether or not it has uh, HP Ice or anything like that, is a mistake. Now, I can switch into, again, he does not have a Steel type, so Trip can switch in. I am, spe I am prepared to take at the very least one modest spec psychic and i do anticipate that it's likely that he has psychic now it also wouldn't be a bad idea for him to switch into crobat here um before we do anything of the sort 92 hp left on clisk x from the crobat 145 down to 92 53 damage that is not a choice band variety uh, and it could be just a low roll on high attack or a high roll on less than high attack so uh, trip won't do a whole lot of damage if I just right away click sludge bomb here yeah it'll do 15 to 18 um, and that's a really likely switch in on his part. Um, however, we have no idea whether or not this thing thinks it's going to just annihilate me with a psychic. So what I could do is switch in Ditto here. Ditto will do decently well. Yeah, he is going to switch out. Uh, probably into the Crobat. Yes, into the Crobat. And now I can go into Ditto, become Crobat, outspeed the Crobat, because I'm Scarfed, unless he's Scarfed, and then we might get some more information here, boys. So, Ditto is in. We get to learn this guy's set. Brave Bird, U-Turn, Cross Poison, and Roost. So, I would not anticipate a Scarfed Crobat to learn Roost. So uh, I'm assuming then it follows, ergo, that he is not a choice in any way. So that happened. <laughs> I'm so frustrated about this. So, um, that static noise you heard continues for the entire rest of that battle. And unfortunately, I didn't realize it during the recording. Um, it, it only now that I'm trying to edit the video that I realized the video is just all static after that point in the battle. So while I wanted to do a live calm while I recorded it live, there's no sound for it, and that's really unfortunate because I like the raw emotion that comes from the live recordings, but unfortunately I'm just going to have to do the rest of this battle as post-com, and I really don't like doing it. I, I think it's great for other people, and I actually like watching it a lot because it's it's very fast, but the thought process, getting in there and like like cheering for the move you want your the person you're rooting for to do, I think is so much fun. And you kind of lose that a little bit, but 
Here we are. I, I'm not super experienced in doing these guys. So I'm going to do my best here. Uh, but we're going to lead off from where we from where we finished the last couple of turns. So we didn't get very far. I think what happened is uh, a, a pop-up had come up on my screen for my antivirus right as I was in the middle of recording. And I just clicked OK thinking like, okay, whatever, it's, it's, go away. Like, I don't want, I don't want to see you right now. But I think that, I guess, made a hiccup on my recording and it, it messed up something about my microphone setting. So that's really unfortunate. I'll do my best to be in the mindset that I had at the time. Um, but, uh, <laughs> post comment is, guys, post comment is. So, on this turn, we had Remix had just come in after a double on my end uh, and a switch on his end. And I just chose to go for Brave Bird here. I want as much damage on this Crobat as possible. I don't, if it's a supportive set, which I was kind of anticipating it was. I want it weakened, and I anticipated he was just going to U-turn again, and so he does. And so now I'm in with a Scarf, really fast Pokemon, fastest Pokemon on the field, and he's going to gain momentum. So we're going to have to kind of play around that. He goes into Bangarang here, which is his Tyranitar. Um, I don't know what set this is, and I'm terrified at this point that it might be Dragon Dance, and he might just set it up and sweep me right now. I mean, it wouldn't be that simple since I still have the Ditto, but I go into my Mad Mence, my, my physically defensive Mad Mence, who was designed to take on the Excadrill. Without the Excadrill there, this is the next best thing for me to really try and take on with this thing. He's got the Embor also, but he just goes for the Stealth Rocks on that turn as I hard switch. I go for the Wish here to kind of scout what he's got for me. Um... I calculated that I would live an Ice Punch. He goes for a Stone Edge and he misses. So now that's telling me he doesn't have Ice Punch and he's just kind of a supportive set with Stab. I go for the Defog there to get rid of the rocks, assuming he's going to go for Stone Edge now, and he does. So I'll take that damage and we'll kind of scout how much damage it does. It's about half, uh, but after the Wish and the uh, Leftovers recovery, it's something I can easily wall out for him. And we calc that there's some offensive investment, but he's not fully invested. Uh, I'm going to click Wish again here. If he clicks Stone Edge, then I can just kind of stall him out of it. Eventually, he'll miss again. He goes for Stealth Rock here. And at this point, I'm thinking this is not the right battle for me to do, to just endlessly do this. I can use this Wish to take whatever move he's going to throw at me and then heal it back because he's at minus one. And Dumbledore is such a safe switch. I'm so safe against this guy. I resist both his stabs and he's at minus one. So he goes crunch here. I resist it. It does so little damage at minus one. I'm thinking I wall this thing for days. I get the wish up. And now um, I make a hard read here. I'm assuming he's going to switch and he does. And so I click ice punch and take out that fat bat on the incoming because I know he four times resists the fighting stab. And if he thinks I'm just going to attack what's in front of me in this circumstance, he's wrong. I have to play a little bit more aggressive um, with my uh, with my gentleman caller here. So he comes into Bosch, and this is just like a kind of safe Pokemon for him. It's a good way for him to scout. I'm going to go into Bronzong here uh, and try and get some things going. So he is just going to Volt Switch. I'll take this reasonably well. Uh, we calc this and determined that it's pretty it's pretty low if any investment and he's gonna go hard into the the big bear pig i have nothing for this thing so i stay in being like well that's it i'm just gonna die or he is gonna predict the salamence and i'm gonna survive it because he already knows i'm a defensive set and he does predict the salamence he clicks head smash i get the trick room off and now i'm thinking this is i'm a brave max attack really slow aka now in trick room really fast bronzong so i click earthquake he reads it pretty well um that would have taken out his embor and that's unfortunate for me it really is but uh, i'm gonna take advantage of this to go for stealth rock of my own because he's making a lot of switch and he has a lot of you uh, volt turn u turn potential on his team um and so i take that reasonably well a little heavier than i would have wanted but I'm on a hard switch here uh, on that Thunderbolt. Uh, I think I might have said Volt Switch. He Thunderbolted. Um, hard switch. Pretty sure I can take this pretty well. He's going to go for the Volt Switch now. And I'm still under the Trick Room here. So something's going to die. <laughs> this is this is Kinkelder we're talking about here. So he goes Ganon. Um, and 
I'm not sure if he's trying to bait an attack or not, or if he doesn't know what I am, but I am Choice Banded Iron Fist. And so I click the Drain Punch here, thinking now that the, uh, now that the Crobat's gone, I don't have to worry. Dumbledore's already taken lives this game. He's uh, Ice Punched this gentleman to death. Now, Bronzong's weak, but I still saved him for uh, for Death Fodder later. Bosch is weakened now, and I, I think he designed this to take on Dumbledore, but I don't think he was anticipating the adamant band there. So I'm going to hard switch into Remix to try and counter his momentum potential here. I'm assuming he's going to go for a Volt Switch or maybe a Pain Split um, to try and get something happening, and he is going to go for the Volt Switch there. Um, I don't really know this guy's full moveset at the time, but then coming in on it with the with the ditto here kind of grants me that knowledge. So uh, I get a good read of his move set. I now know what Ditto's move set is. And if I recall correctly, Volt Switch, Thunderbolt, Pain Split, and uh, Hydro Pump, I think is what I, I see at that time. Uh, he's going to double out in this at this time. And he's going to go hard into Umbreon. I'm wondering if he thinks I was going to Pain Split. But I didn't choose to do that. I just try and take my momentum and leave. So I, I hit that Volt Switch and I weaken Scream. Now here's what's in my head. I want to get Scream weak enough that a Choice Banded Mock Punch takes it out because this is a threat to my team. It is not easy for me to take this guy out. And if I don't know his item yet, if he's Specs or something, almost nothing on my team takes it well. So uh, I go into Mad Mens here and I click Protect to see whether or not he has the Hidden Power Ice for me. And uh, he shows that he does, or at least that he shows that he has a hidden power that is super effective. It's probably ice. Um, so I take a lot of knowledge from that. I decide it's too unsafe for me to stay in here. I have to switch. So I'm going to go out into Bronzong, just kind of sack it. There's not really much else I can do here. I'm willing to go down, uh, and but he's going to baton pass. So he's actually going to take back that momentum. But I'm thinking this is great news because if he comes in on Stealth Rocks one more time, I'm not certain, but I'm pretty sure he's in um, Mach Punch range for the Kinkelder. So we're in against Bosch here, and unfortunately there's not much to do about this. I don't want to take too much damage, and uh, Bosch is just going to clean up uh, Bronzong with the Volt Switch. So Bronzong goes down. It's a 5-5 match at this point, and I'm about to take momentum back. He's going to go hard into Scream. And at this point, I was thinking, I could go Kinkelder. I don't really know its full spread. I don't want to risk not killing it and losing probably my win condition at this point. So I go Remix. Uh, I survive that, and now I get to see its full move set. I see Baton Pass, Shadow Ball. I see the Psychic or Psyshock, I forget which one, and Hidden Power. So I now know its full move set. Uh, and he's going to hard switch into... Um, Tyranitar, I just click the safe Shadow Ball because straight up that is the Mon that's threatening winning with uh, with Kinkelder at this point. So he does that and I think for a long time, what can I do here? Should I go into uh, Salamence? But uh, I think, no, you know what? I can get game right now uh, because if after one more Stealth Rock he is weakened enough that I will beat him and so I go into Dumbledore and he has the Z move, and my heart drops, guys. I wish you could see my face, how emotional I get here. I'm like, please, don't be Supersonic Sky Strike. Don't be Supersonic Sky Strike. It's Supersonic Sky Strike. And I was trying to play aggressive here. I thought he would go for a Rock-type move, trying to get ahead of the game on the Salamence. But he reads me hard. He makes a hard read. And I lost all the momentum that I had. I thought I had that game in the bag. I could kill everything on his team. Um, he was in range. Everything was going to die. Kinkelder had that game under wraps. So I'm like, at this point, I think I've lost, right? Uh, we saw that Z move. I go into uh, try and get something against this guy. I click the sludge bomb here, predicting the switch uh, maybe into Endless Sky. But he just goes for the safe sack on Bosch. So. We're in a really precarious situation here because Rotom's gone and that's good and Crobat's gone and that's good. He doesn't have any momentum anymore. He's going to go into Ganon. Now, Ganon obviously is going to wreck Trip. I can't stay in, but I've got to be thinking about the end game here. Um, the game's getting pretty long at this point, I will say. So the timer's sort of running. 
I go into Mad Mentz here. This is my best shot. I'm assuming he's going to click the Flare Blitz, and I need to do my best to try and survive that. Um, and I don't want to just sack trip right in front of me. So I do go Mad Mentz. I do eat this up. Um, it's a crit, actually, which is good and bad. It, it means that Ganon takes a little bit more damage. I get a little recovery back with my, um, with my leftovers. And we kind of need to read what's going on here. I'm anticipating he might just go for the head smash or something. So uh, what I do here, I go straight for the Draco. I'm like, you know what? Just take it out. It's a threat. Let's just take it out. Kill what's in front of me. And I drop a Draco. And I get a read on how much damage that does on Bangarang. I'm like, oh, you know what? Great. So at this point, I'm just trying to play a little aggressive. He hadn't seen an attacking move on Mad Men's yet. So he didn't know uh, what I was going with that. I'm at minus two. And uh, he's actually going to hard switch back. Uh, or he's going to switch this time into Endless Sky. Uh, so I just doubled the uh, the Draco thinking, hey, if I can take out the Tyranitar, that's great. Uh, no, I protected. I'm sorry. I protected to try and get a little health back on that turn um, from Leftovers, hoping that it would allow me to survive the, the, st the sh Stone Edge. But because he's not at minus one, I really just wanted the health. Uh, he's actually going to switch again. So he's just switching on my Salamence. And this is the point. It's really late in the game now. There's very little time left in the game. And I just drop another Drake and I'm thinking, he's just giving me lefties recovery, trying to read around me. And it's not really working out for him. But the Ganon's at full HP. He will die to one more switch in from the Stealth Rocks that I have up. But he will kill me with Head Smash right now. And he actually switches again he actually switches again i would have killed him with another uh, even though i'm at minus four at this point i would have killed him again but i was actually willing to sack here because i knew that if he'd cook me out he would just die i honestly i was like it doesn't really matter what i do here he'll probably kill me i should just sack it so i go for the wish and he actually lets me live and he switches into endless sky at this point i think i'm like this is crazy I choose to switch into trip thinking even if he predicts me to go into trip right now it's just a psychic i can eat it up we've seen that he's leftovers and he shows the hidden power uh which we already know we've seen this in the sky um oh wait no we haven't seen hidden power yet i scouted the hidden power on someone else but it's super effective so we know it's ice so he really is set up for the salamence but i heal all that back and trips at full health now here he drops a healing wish and this is, this is a huge moment in the game because he just sacked down to make it a 3v4. I'm winning right now this game and the timer is getting really close to ending. He won't die to the stealth rock because of this, but Ganon has to, he doesn't have enough turns to take out every mon on my team. Now he can kill a majority of them because he has super effective against all of them. So what I choose to do here and I don't like playing this way, but I know that Callum understands. I sack Remix, and I took quite a long time doing it. But I did it intentionally because in this next turn, in choosing who I switch in after this, the timer does run out. Now, it's 3-3, and I don't know for a fact that I will take the win here. But I know it's my best opportunity to win. Looking forward at the rest of the turns, it's going to be really difficult for me to take out this Ganon. Um, Heliolisk probably wouldn't be able to do it. Getting a minus one on him with Salamence doesn't guarantee I'll live the head smash because I wasn't fully able to determine what his set was. And unfortunately for Callum, my thoughts did play out correct. The timer runs out on Trip, who took the least amount of damage from Stealth Rocks that I could have done there. And as you guys know, when a, when the time runs out, if it's the same number of Pokemon alive, the winner is determined based on health percentage. And then after that, maximum, the, the total HP pool remaining. So I have actually won a game before where we had three Mon each side, both, all three of those Mon at 100% HP, but I won in that scenario because even though I had 300% HP Mon and he had 308% HP Mon, I had the higher maximum HP pool because I had a Blissey. So that's how I had won that match. And I was looking to take the victory in the same way in this one. And I don't like doing it. And I think I made it a lot more... I made it a lot more clear 
in the in the live recording that I was doing that and I felt I didn't feel good about it but at the same time this is one of the ways you pick up wins in the GBA it is a win condition and the way you win a match in Pokemon is to assess your win conditions and play around them he accurately assessed that M Bore at full health could take on the rest of the uh, rest of my teammates uh, maybe struggling against uh, Ditto, who could potentially take on the Embor after playing some shenanigans with some of my other Mon. Maybe I Volt Switch, Sack Trip, come in on Embor or, uh, with Ditto, take the Embor out. In fact, I did actually have a chance of winning, now that I think about that. I'm Theory Moning here, and it, I don't really need to. The thing is, he made a great play with that Healing Wish setup. Unfortunately, I think he wasn't closely monitoring the time quite like I was and having lost the Kinkelder in such a tragic way I was looking I was like how do I win this what's my win condition remaining and one of the things that I noticed I, I honestly thought I had lost but then he played around that Salamence choosing not to take it out um, because I don't think he had he didn't have all the information and when I finally gave him the information that I was Draco he kept trying to regain the momentum to set up for a sweep. But what he should have done in those circumstances was take out Amon one at a time until I had nothing left. But unfortunately, he kept letting my Salamence live. And in doing that, he gave way too much time to the timer. And I was able to take out the victory by playing the clock. I don't like doing it, but I know for a fact Callum understands that he has a win by timer this season and it was another it was a game in a similar light he assessed that as a win condition he could have won in other ways just like i could have potentially won this game in other ways too it's very difficult to say how it would have played out i think it's more likely after that healing wish onto the embor that he did have that game but it was absolutely not guaranteed because it it was predicated on him making the right plays after. I could have once again gone into Salamence, and if he'd not clicked Head Smash, and I'd gotten him to minus one, I could start switching around, play some games with Trip, double intimidate him by going Trip back into Salamence, sack one thing, come in with the Heliolisk, he's taken some damage from the Flare, but there's lots of things I could have done to play around him, and there's no way for us to know if we'd taken this to the end, and there was no time limit, how it would have come out. I think I'm kind of rambling here. I don't really feel the need to defend myself, except that I don't like winning like that. And I know that if I were on the other end of it, I would have been like, come on, I've taken back momentum. I can win this. Please choose your moves faster. But that's because we all want to win. And I think I played it right. And I took the victory back. I think I was on my way to victory. I think if I had sacked the Salamence against the Tyranitars, uh, Supersonic Sky Strike, and come in with the Kinkelder, I had that game in the bag because I outsped the Embor and would have drain punched it to death. I could have mock uh, or I I guess I probably wouldn't have done that. I probably would have mock punched anything except the Embor. If the Embor came in, sacked something else. Um, actually, no, at the level of HP the Embor was at, he would have died to mock punch too. So literally, I had that game. I, I had it literally in the bag. I could have just mock punched my way to victory um, if I had dodged that supersonic sky strike by sacking the, uh, getting the intimidate off with the ments and sacking that on the Tyranitar. Unfortunately, I played way more aggressively than I needed to, and he read that situation so perfectly, and that was a pivotal moment. That was huge for him, and almost won him the game. Unfortunately, I assessed a different win condition after that that happened to lead me to victory. So, great game, Callum. Thank you so much for that game. Sorry guys that I kind of rambled at the end here with my talk. I think I got a little Mega Mogwai on you all. <laughs> you know how he starts to explain himself. He kind of gets some redundancy. I know I'm doing that a little bit, but I wanted to give him and myself a fair analysis of this game because I thought about it a lot. I was really happy to pick up this win. Uh, I won last week against Battler X, and this is huge for me, having two wins in a row and clawing my way back up the rankings in my, in my division. So I was really happy to take this win. Are the circumstances for it the best? No, but it's 
That's guys, that's how the games go sometimes. We've seen lots of timer stall wins and losses in this league. And uh, I had to play for my win con that time. I wasn't going to intentionally click moves that were going to cause me to lose. And so I did what I had to do. I pick up a 3-3 victory. No differential for me, so I'm still miserable in the differential department. But I'm grabbing more Ws. So that's win number three for me. I am now three and four in the, in the league. And, you know, it's not great, but we got to start somewhere. And I'm looking forward to pulling back some more wins. Uh, looking forward to next week. I'm not sure who my opponent is. Uh, what is next week is week eight. N my ne week eight opponent is Gator um, and the Florida Gators. And that man is in a hard division. Is he? He's had a he's had a hard run too. Uh, so uh, looking forward to to seeing another newcomer in this league. Gator's a great guy. Runs with a great crew. Really looking forward to that battle. Um, if you guys have any comments about this battle. Uh, please leave them in the comment section down below. I'll check them out later. As always, my name is Jim Leader Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you guys next time.